Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the IGCSE uh, Cambridge Paper 4, variant 1 from 0580 syllabus of June 2022. This question here is about trigonometry. And um, these questions, I normally answer them by, uh, by request. Right? So if you have any question you would like me to answer, you can just send me a message and I will... You know, as soon as I'm able to answer the question and upload it. So I don't answer these questions like going through the whole paper in generally. What I do is I answer them upon request. All right, so now here we have a question where we're given this quadrilateral, which is split up into like these two triangles, like joined together. And we're asked to calculate the angle ACD, ACD, which is the angle over here, which I'm going to call theta for now. So we need to calculate the angle ACD. Now this angle here is part of a triangle ACD. Okay, and this triangle ACD, we know all three lengths in this triangle. Right? It's not a right angle triangle. Okay, you cannot say, oh, it looks like one, because you know this looks maybe it looks a little bit like a right angle triangle. You cannot assume anything is right angled unless you know for sure, right? Especially as these diagrams are not to scale. Um, so you cannot assume. Unless you know for sure it's a right angle triangle with some information they gave you. So what we got to do is we've got to use the trigonometry for non-right angle triangles. And when you know all three sides, then we can use the cosine rule, right? Now, the cosine rule, there are two formulas that I like to uh, explain to my students to memorize. Um, and one of them is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2bc cosine a where you know this angle here is opposite this side over here the a stands for the side opposite the angle there now that's what i would use if i'm trying to find a side and i know two two other sides and the angle between them that's what we would use but here we have all three sides so what we can do is this formula when you rearrange it it looks like this when you rearrange it you get cosine a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared divided by 2 bc it's just rearranging this equation now here is when you know all three sides a b and c are the three sides and you're trying to find an angle but the important thing for you to realize is that this angle and this side must be opposites so if you're trying to find a particular angle like i'm trying to find this angle theta here then i've got to use my a as 9 and my b and c must be 12 and 14. so it's very very important to, for, for us to remember that so over here if I want to ca calculate angle ACD, I'm going to use the cosine rule. I'll say the cosine of angle A, cosine of angle theta, i am called it theta here, is equal to um, 12 squared plus 14 squared, 12 squared plus 14 squared, minus 9 squared. All right, this one is the opposite to that side, to the angle we're trying to find. And these two sides, it doesn't matter which way you write them down. I could write this, I could have written this down as 12 and... Uh, 14 squared plus 12 squared, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, and let's just make this straight. So that's going to be time over 2 times 12 times 14. And that will give us our angle theta. So I can then write down the answer after putting it on the calculator. Make sure that we're in degree mode, which we are. And then we just basically, we can put the straight away inverse cosine, put the fraction 12 squared, plus 14 squared minus 9 squared over 2 times 12 times 14 close that bracket equals and it gives us angle 39.571 39.571 continues now because it didn't tell us how to round the answer angles should always be given to correct to one decimal place as mentioned in the beginning of the paper and instructions so this is going to be 39.6 degrees to one decimal place. That's how you should express your answer for angles in degrees. All right, so now, um, so yeah, so the important thing for us is to realize we can use the cosine rule to find the angle that we are looking for. Okay, and uh, this is how you use the cosine rule. So for example, if I was finding this angle over here, I would say 9 squared plus 14 squared minus 12 squared. So whatever angle you're trying to find, 
the side opposite that angle is going to be in this place and the other two sides are going to be in these two places. So that's how, what you should remember using the cosine rule to find an angle. All right, now for part B, it says show that BC equals 7.05 kilometers correct to two decimal places. So now here we've got to show that question. Now the difference between a calculate question and a show that question is that you have to make 100% sure that you have shown your steps clearly in one of these show that questions. All right, and you have to show that it's equal to a, you know, 7.0. You write it to more than two decimal places and show that it rounds to this value. Okay, so in a show that question, because they gave you the answer, of course, you can't just write down the answer. You have to show your steps very clearly. So we got to show that the length BC, and I'm going to call it X here. So I'll just call it, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to say let BC be X. All right. Now, here we have an, again, another triangle. It's not a right angle triangle, as we can see very clearly. But here we have all three angles in the triangle, and we have one side. So basically, we have, um, we, we can, we're able to use what's called the, um, the sine rule, right? Because we have one pair of opposites. We know both of them. And here we have a pair of opposites, one of them unknown. When you have a situation like that, you can use the sine rule. And the sine rule basically is, is quite simple. It states that the length of a side divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side will give you the same ratio for any pairs of sides and angles in the triangle. So, for example, x over sine 25 will be the same ratio as 14 over sine 123. That will give you exactly the same ratio. Okay, if I knew this side as well, this side divided by sine 32 would be giving me the same ratio. That's called the sine rule, right? And we use that rule to, um, you know, calculate missing length or angle. So here we're going to find this length, which we called x. So x is equal to, you have 14 times the sine of 25 divided by the sine of 123. So there's your steps shown very clearly. Okay, and now we can put this in the calculator. So here we don't have to inverse sine because we, we, we're finding the side we need to find the sine of the angle so 14 sine 25 divided by the sine of 123 again we are in degree mode so that should give us the answer which is 7.0548 7.0548 continues on we got to show that it rounds to two decimal places so therefore you can say bc is equal to 7.05 to two decimal places as they ask us to show. All right, so these steps must be shown really clearly, when, especially when you have a show that question. Very, very important. All right, and that's part B. Now for part C. It says calculate the shortest distance from B to AC. All right, now this shortest distance type of question is very important. And basically, the shortest distance from a point to a, a line is going to always be, like for example, if I look at this distance, that's not the shortest distance to AC. The shortest distance to AC would be something over here. Okay, if you go, you see it would be longer if you're going along here. That's not the shortest distance from B to AC. The shortest distance is going to be somewhere over here. And you can see what makes that the shortest distance is the fact that the angle between that line and that point, okay, the, the angle joining the point to the line, and the line is 90 degrees. This is a right angle. If this is a right angle, then this will be the shortest distance. So I can call this point, for example, x. Okay, so I need to find the length bx. bx is the shortest distance. Okay, so we can say that bx is perpendicular to ac. Right, and we can therefore say we can, we've got basically we've got a right angle triangle here. We have a right angle triangle. Okay, which we can just pinpoint. It's going to be a bit funny there. All right, so we have this right angle triangle, which I've called this point X. This is B, and this is C. We know this angle is 32, given already. And we just worked out what this length is, okay, in the last part of the question. BC it says show that it's 7.05 kilometers to two decimal places. So I can write it in its more accurate form. 7.0548 is actually the last answer in my calculator. 0548 kilometers. So if I want to, I know this is a right angle as we mentioned. So if I want to find this distance here, bx, okay, which I can call y, all right, 
So by bx is y. If I find that, I can use the the tri the trigonometry of right angle triangles. So kato, because I have a right angle here. So here I have the side which is the opposite side. This side is opposite, and this side here is the hypotenuse. So I have opposite and hypotenuse, which we're going to use sine. Okay, we can say that the sine of the angle 32 is equal to the side opposite, which we're trying to find y, over the side, which is the hypotenuse, which is 7.0548. So we can say y is equal to 7.0548 times the sine of 32 degrees. So that will give us our answer. So if I take my calculator, this is already in my calculator. So I'll take this answer and multiply it by. So it's answer times the sine of 32 degrees. And that should give us our answer. That's 3.7384. 3.7384. So this is 3.74 kilometers to 3SF. Didn't tell us how to round it. Length should be given to 3SF unless otherwise stated. Okay, so there's the answer to part C. Then it says, calculate the length of the straight line BD. Now, BD is a line that goes all the way, of course, from B to D. We want to find the length of that line. So if we think about what we have here, I know this angle from the last part of the question. This angle was found in the beginning um, as 39.571. We can write it leave it in its more accurate form so this angle is 39.571 degrees all right so therefore i know what the whole of this angle is here okay it's 32 plus 39.571 um i also know this length okay and this length here so i'm gonna just draw this triangle bcd so what i'll do is i'll just draw the triangle bcd so this is d this is c this is b somewhere over here i'll just kind of just draw that triangle okay so i don't know what this angle is it looks like a right angle the way i've drawn it but you can't assume it is that c that's d and that's b now what do we know from here we know that this is 12 kilometers okay we know the whole of this angle we can say b c d is equal to 32 plus 39.571 so i can just add i can go back to that last answer there and I add to that 32. So that gives me 71.571. That's 71.571 degrees. So that's 71.571. So I know that angle. And I need to find the length BD. I'll call that um, I'll call that Z. All right. I need to find this length. Um, I know the length BC. We just found that length B. Um, BC. Did we find the length BC? Yes, we did. We had to show that it was um, 7.05. So 7.0548. So I know this length is 7.0548. So what I can use here is I can use a cosine rule. I mean, the way I've drawn this, it looks like it's a right angle, but we can't assume it is. So I'll just draw it slightly. You know, you can't just assume it is. All right. So I can use here the cosine rule to find BD. Okay, because I have two sides and the angle between them. As we mentioned, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. If I'm trying to find a length, this is probably the most convenient form to write it in. I'm trying to find what this is. So I can say z is equal to. Now, I like to put this straight away under the square root sign. So I don't forget. So the square root of all of this. So b squared and c squared are the two sides that make the angle. So that's 12 squared plus 7.0548 squared. Okay, minus 2BC. So minus 2 times 12 times 7.0548 times the cosine of the angle between them, which is 71.571. So what I'm going to do now, okay, because I have all these different um, uh, things, I want to keep them in exact form. So I've got basically this, this length, this angle here, which um, I can store this as A. Okay, so that's the angle stored. So if I go back to recall, my angle A is, if I go back to shift and recall, my angle A is 71.571. That's A. And I'm going to save the angle, uh, sorry, the, the length 7.058. Okay, this, this length here. 
Okay, I'll save this as B, store as B. So that's, that's now B, right? So now if I just put this in my calculator, it will give me my answer. So I've got 12 squared. Let's put it square root of, sorry. 12 squared plus, sorry, plus, not minus. What am I doing? Square root of 12 squared plus, and then I'm going to put recall, and I want 7.058, which is B. Okay, squared minus 2 times 12 times again B. So I'll go to recall and B again. 2 times 12 times um, 7.05548 times the cosine of the angle, which I've again stored that as A. 71.5. So I've got the exact forms here. That's, that's what I'm doing here. And that gives me 11.8425, 11.8425. Um, we have to write the answer to 3SF, so that's going to be 11.8 kilometers. Okay, so that's the length of BD. And that is um, part D of this question done, right, using the cosine rule. Then for part E, it says C is due east of A. C is due east of A. Find the bearing of D from C. Okay, so we got to find the bearing of D from C. So we're finding the bearing of D from C. We have to draw a north line at C. Okay, whenever you're finding the bearing of something from somewhere, after the thing, the place that comes after the word from, that's where you are measuring the angle. That's where you have to draw your north line. So the north line is vertically going upwards. Okay, facing north. And we want to find the angle from the north line in the clockwise direction from C until you're facing D. So you're going to go all the way around to there. That's the angle we're looking for. All right. They told us something else as well. They told us that the bearing of um, C from A, or it says C is due east of A. So that means basically the bearing of C from A is 90 degrees. That's what it means, due east. Okay, which means that the angle from here to there must be 270 because that, that means this is also a right angle over here. This is also a right angle. All right, so we can say that the bearing of D, D from C is going to be 270 degrees plus this angle um, ACD. This angle here. And that was one of the things we found in the beginning. We found that angle, didn't we? The first thing we found was the angle um, ACD which is 39.571. So we know this angle already is 39.571. So our bearing is going to be 270, which is up to here, plus this angle, 39.571. So bearings are always measured clockwise from the north line, okay, and always written with three figures. So this we're going to now just um, add 270 plus 39. 0.571 and that gives us 309.57 309.57 one it goes on now we should always give bearings to the nearest degree so that's going to be 310 degrees so bearing should be given to the nearest whole number and be written with three figures if, the, if for example if the bearing came up as 72 degrees for example we would write 0 70 but here it's asking us uh, here we have a three figure number anyway so you just leave it as 310 to the nearest degree normally bear angles are written to one decimal place but bearing should be given to the nearest degree that's the general format and that ends this question number seven Okay, and um, this is from the June 2020 IGCSE paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region. If you have any questions that are not on the playlist, you can just send me a request and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, there's uh, other questions dealing with the topic of trigonometry of non-right angle triangles which this is all mostly about is going to be placed over here in this area you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon